Okay, so after covering limited companies, we can now move to the next topic that's called partnership. Okay, so everyone should should keep the spectrum in their mind. On one hand, we had a sole trader, which is a single entity that was running the business, making all the decisions, taking all the profits. Then we looked at limited companies where a company would go out, issue shares, take money from the market, and you can have hundreds, thousands of owners over here in the form of shareholders. We now move to the next entity, which is called a partnership. Okay, so I have explained this earlier, but we'll go into detail over here. A partnership can be an entity that is managed between 2 to 20 partners. So I can say a partnership is, is formed when partners would gather together to form a business with the intention of making a profit. All right, so that's the aim of a partnership. It lies directly in the middle between sole trader and limited companies. Okay, but first thing first we need to address is that when there is a sole trader he would take up all the profits he would withdraw that when there is a limited company then a company or the board of directors would would pay out dividends and no one would be entitled to any any drawings but what about a partnership which again does not operate like a limited company but there are partners that would be running the business how would they decide how to keep the profits who gets what how much can you withdraw so all of this has to be decided when you when you form a partnership in order to decide this at the time of forming a partnership we draft something called a partnership agreement so when a partnership agreement is drafted it would list down all the essential details for example so these are the important partnership agreement terms that we need to state down. So the first one I would say is, is the profit and loss sharing ratio. How would profits and losses be divided amongst partners? Interest on capital. So for example, if one partner has invested more than the other partner, how would that partner be compensated? So the partnership out of its profits would pay interest on the amount of capital invested. So if partner A, has invested more than partner B, he would get a higher return which compensates him for his additional capital. Otherwise, for example, the partner that has invested more might want to withdraw his capital as well. So we need to compensate them for higher capital contribution. Interest on drawings. We need to also penalize partners that are withdrawing more. So if, you, if your drawings are high, you would have to pay a higher interest to the partnership. So I can say in interest on capital, that is subtracted from profit because the partnership is paying it to the partners. But with interest on drawings, the partners are paying this amount to the partnership. So the profits are increasing. Salaries. So if any partner is involved in management, they would be compensated for their opportunity cost and time by being paid a salary over here. Interest on loan. Again, interest on loan is something that you need to pay a partner if a partner has given a loan to the business. As a result, if they would have invested their money elsewhere, they would have opportunity cost as well. So again, interest on loan will be paid out of the partnership profits as well. That's also an appropriation. So at the time of forming a partnership, a partnership agreement needs to be formed, which needs to list down all of these important agreements that will help us govern the structure of this partnership. And if a partnership has been formed without an agreement, so if your partnership has started without a partnership agreement, we will follow the Partnership Act of 1890. Now, that is something that everyone needs to remember because very often on the exam, they would ask for the Partnership Act of 1890. So under the Partnership Act of 1890, all partners have to contribute equally to capital. There will be no interest on capital. So no partner will be compensated for their capital contribution. No one will get any, any salaries. There will be no interest on drawings. Profits and losses will be shared equally. So remember, there will be an equal profit share over here. All right, so your, your profit sharing will be equal. There will be a 5% interest on loan. So if you've given a loan to the partnership, you will get a 5% interest on it. All right, so this will apply when a partnership has started without an agreement. 
So if I were to list down some of the advantages of partnership, I would say that number one, the capital invested would be far greater than if you're doing the business by yourself. Then you would also get access to greater fund of knowledge, experience, expertise. So as a result, when another partner comes in, he would bring in all of this along with himself, which will help you expand your business. So you would be able to provide greater range of services. Losses will be shared, hence less risk. All right. So your risk will also be divided. And if one partner is not available, the other partner can obviously cover that up. So when you're operating as a partnership, you can say different types of business and, and financial risk will be reduced. However, partnerships will also carry some of the disadvantages. Let me show those disadvantages as well. All right, so we can say that when you're operating as a partnership, you will not have the freedom to act independently. If you were a sole trader, you will also have to share your profits. So if losses are shared, your, your profits are also shared. Then you're also legally liable for the acts of the other partners. All right, so if let's say the reputation damage of one partner can affect the, the reputation of the other partner as well. We should also note down one more thing. Partnerships are also unlimited liabilities. Remember in company, I've, I've gone into detail about limited liability, but under a partnership, you are still operating as an unlimited liability. So your personal assets are at risk as well. And obviously one partner can cause a hindrance in the development of the business or there can be a mismatch in the vision of the business as well. All right, so where there are advantages, there are also disadvantages to operating a partnership. Okay, now once understanding the structure of the partnership, now let's move towards the accounting for this partnership. So I think the first thing that I would like to discuss is that how do financial statements work? How would profits be distributed? How would we account for that? And how would the capital look like for a partnership? So let's discuss that now over here. Okay, so while accounting for a partnership, as usual, we will draw our income statement. Remember, your income statement helps you calculate the profit for the year. So the first step will always be to calculate the profit for the year. Now, whereas when we were as a sole trader, this entire profit used to go to one individual. But because we're a partnership, this profit has to be distributed. So in order to distribute this profit, we will draw something called an appropriation account. So appropriation account will help us distribute this profit. All right. So to distribute this profit, we should draw an appropriation account. I'll just show that very soon. After we have distributed our profit, we will draw something called a current account. Okay. Now what a current account will do is it will be one way to view how profits, salaries and everything would eventually impact your, your capital account. I will also show the current account. But the idea is to differentiate what is a partner's investment versus what are their appropriations, which means what profits do partners get, what salaries do partners get, what are their drawings, etc. All these details or the appropriations or the distributions during the year will all flow to the current account. And after that, we draw our statement of financial position. So something that is new over here is obviously your appropriation account and the current account. Let's first understand how the appropriation account will look like. So first I would ask you guys to pause this video and copy down the appropriation account. And, and now let's understand how the appropriation account should look like. Okay. Once we have our profit figure, which is calculated from our income statement, let's start with our appropriations. So first thing first, we will add interest on drawings. Remember, I previously explained that partners will be penalized for making excessive drawings. So they will be charged interest. Now, once they are charged interest, what this interest will do is this interest will increase your profit, which is why this interest on drawings is being added and this increases your profit. So we call this figure to be the unappropriated profit. That's profit from your operations plus the interest on drawings that the business has earned is your unappropriated profit. Now this profit or this figure over here will be the one that will be distributed. Okay. Now how do we distribute profits? Number one, let's start with our appropriations. First thing is salaries. 
So all salaries to the partners that are involved in the management will be paid from the profits. That's the first thing. Then partners will be paid for interest on capital. Remember, you will be paid for your capital contribution. So just giving an example, if A has invested $100,000 in the business and B has invested $60,000 in the business, I'm talking about the capital. Now, as a result, A should be compensated for investing a higher amount of capital. As a result, A should be given a higher interest on capital over here. So let's say if we're rewarding them a 10% interest on capital, A will get $10,000 and B will get $6,000. This way, A is also compensated and B is also compensated. All right, so salaries, interest on capital, these are all appropriations from the profit. So they will then be subtracted from this profit and we will call this figure to be the residual profit. All right, so remember we, we started with our unappropriated profit. We will subtract all appropriations and this will be the residual profit or the profit available. Now this profit will be distributed in the profit sharing ratio over here. That's the share of profit and how we should distribute our profits over here. We will obviously solve questions on this in the next video but I would urge everyone to copy down the format and have an understanding of how the appropriation account would look like. All right, now let's move our understanding to the next account that we need to draw, which is called the current account. Okay, now for a partnership, what we can say is we can divide our capital into two parts. One, I can call it to be the fixed capital account. What I, what I mean by the fixed capital account is the investments made by the partner, all right? So the amount invested by the partner should go to their fixed capital account. Next, I need to take a look at the current account. Now, current accounts is where all the distributions should be recorded. The profits, salaries, I just explained this, drawings, etc. All the appropriations during the year will be recorded in the current account, whereas the investment should be recorded in the fixed capital account. Now remember, capital is credit in nature, so your fixed capital account will also be credit in nature, and your current account will also be credit in nature. So whatever the partners get should go on the credit side of the current account, whatever the partners have to pay, or it reduces their capital, should go on the debit side. So you guys can see, Partners get salaries, it goes to the credit side of the current account. Partners get interest on capital, it should go to the credit side. They get profits, it should also go to the credit side. But if they take out drawings, it should go on the debit side, that reduces their capital. They have to pay interest on drawings, it reduces their capital. I can say if there is any loss, that also reduces your capital. One more thing that we should record is interest on loan. Now, if partners have given a loan, they are essentially receiving this interest, all right? The business is paying them this interest. So I can say interest on loan should go on the credit side since they're receiving. And once we have all the items on the credit side and the debit side, we can find our balancing figure. Now, we will do this in detail, but let's have a basic understanding of what the balancing figure should look like. So I can say the credit side is my receiving side, debit side is my withdrawal side. So if my receiving side is greater than withdrawals, I can say that it essentially increases my capital because the partners have invested further into the business or that's money that the partners will get. Which means the credit side is heavier than the debit side over here. But if the partners have received re less, or I can say the receiving side is less than the withdrawals, which means that you've withdrawn over and above what you have received, it should reduce my capital since the partners would have to pay. So to conclude this, I can say the capital balance or the, or the capital figure that should go to the statement of financial position will be the fixed capital account plus the current account balances that we will extract for each partner over here should equal to the total capital for the entire partnership. All right, so now what we'll do is in the next video, we'll start solving questions where we'll draw an appropriation account, a current account to understand how they're drawn and how does it impact the partnership statement of financial position.